Hi, welcome to All Things Possible. I'm Chris and I'm Bill. This is Bill. We're excited to have you here with us this week for our episode. So right now, this time of year, we celebrate our freedom and the freedoms that we have in our country. And we want to talk about not only that, but also the personal freedom. And are you claiming your personal freedom and having that freedom in your life? Before we jump in, though, we're going to just welcome you and ask you to join our community. Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube as well as join the All Things Possible community. We love to have you with us. We have free gifts for you there. If you want to go to allthingspossible.biz, again, allthingspossible.biz, and join the community and be a part of us. We'd love to be able to give you information and just tools, just healing techniques. Great things to make life better. And that's what that's today right. is about. We live in this great country. We have all these amazing freedoms. We have, I, I so honor our, our servicemen and women who put everything on the line to make sure that we have, we can live in a land of the free where we can live where we want. We can say what we want. We can do what we want, right? Yes. We, we can, can worship. Believe. We can work where we want. We can choose. And we have all these freedoms and all these things available to us in this country. And yet many times through choices, small choices that we make of our own, we end up putting ourselves in personal slavery, if you will. We give up so many of our personal freedoms by the choices we make. And it may not be the things you're thinking about. So. Uh, we're going well, to get and right one into thing that. that I say all the time is it's the little things that you do on a consistent basis that will ultimately change your life. And if those little things that you're doing are creating you to be in habits and and putting you into you know things that take up your time and that don't have you spending your time properly, that's the same thing. The little things will change your life and not for good. We want to teach you just a few things and maybe not even teach you, but just bring to your mind some of the little things that you could do differently to really have an ultimate life that you want. Maybe think about some of the same old things in a new way. We have this, this land of freedom, but yet there are ways we can lose our freedom in this land. We have laws that we can choose to disobey, but if we disobey traffic tickets, if we exercise our freedom to go into a bank and take their money from them, we will lose our freedom. We can get put in jail, prison, whatever, and lose our personal freedoms. We can lose our right to drive a car if we don't manage and stay within the parameters of what freedom really means, of what right. it is to be free. Right. You have to maintain that. And yet sometimes we don't do that with our own personal lives. We just go and we throw away the rule book personally and don't realize the freedoms that we're giving up and the pain and misery that we're causing in our lives. Right. Yeah, we have to have certain parameters in place to maintain our personal freedom. And when we don't put those parameters in place or we get so into a habit or a ritual of doing things that, that aren't productive for ourselves, it does take our freedom. And, and here's some of the things. Have you ever thought about your thoughts and your feelings? Can, they take, can you lose your freedom to your thoughts and your feelings? How could that happen? Well, pretty easy. <laughs> when you don't manage your thoughts, your thoughts will manage you. What you're thinking, you will eventually do if you are not taking control of that. And one of the other things is managing your emotions. That doesn't mean stuffing them and not filling them and denying that you're having them. It means that you need to recognize it, name it, fill it, and then release it and let it go. One of the things that a story about me is after my twin brother committed suicide, right in the very beginning, I went right into this, I'm in a help it mode. And for a few months, I did really well because I took my focus and put it on something else. And I was serving and doing and you helping were trying to, to make sure that your family, family and his family was going to be okay. You went in to be the caretaker. Right. When everybody else was okay, that's when you got in trouble. Right. And I went into really, really deep depression. Now, depression runs in my family, and I had had depression, but I also knew that part of what I felt like was the reasons behind my brother taking his life was medication. I wasn't going to take medication, and so I had to decide and make some changes for me. And it was the little steps on a consistent basis that really brought me out of that depression. So, and, and the thing that really brought you out of the depression 
really it was all the people that came to you and says just decide to be happy right Isn't that what they, <laughs> no <laughs> and when you're depressed and somebody's like well you just have to choose you have to decide so a lot of the stuff that I say all the time it actually irritates you when it, you're depressed it and you're doesn't frustrated. really help it's not something you can use when you're when you're in that state of depression it actually pushes you down worse right it's exactly what you need to do but it's hard to hear and you don't want to hear it but it's the little things. It's the taking your focus off of yourself and doing service for others. Even if it's just a phone call to someone, not for you to complain or talk about how depressed you are or how upset, but to see how they are. What you find when you start looking outside of yourself is that other people have it really hard too. And it starts to help you realize that yours isn't as bad as you thought and you could manage it better if you were to start doing some simple little steps. Gratitude journal. Writing down some things you're grateful for, having gratitude in your life, doing service, having positive statements in your life. There's a lot of things that you can do to start pulling yourself out of depression and that's what I ultimately had to do. In fact, I teach my seven traits about it all the time because that's where I was. I had to find a way out without medication, without living like I was. I was in my bedroom and didn't want to come out. Yeah. I was sleeping too much. I was wasting time I wasn't being productive and when we can start putting those little things into place we can really change how we are but but when you was in that point where you couldn't you you couldn't change the way you felt I mean you couldn't say I'm gonna be happy that you were so right. down that you couldn't but what you could do is you could exercise your freedom to decide that you were going to do something for someone else because right. you can still go mow somebody's lawn when you're really really sad or you can give them a call and say how are you doing when you're really really sad or you can take their kids or you can go for yeah. a walk there's so many things you can and do when you start doing that then things yeah it's start to change it's exercising a little bit and it's you know the movement it's the diet it's service for other people it's gratitude there's so many little things but when you do the little things consistently it will help you get back onto a track that that you can manage and you may need some medication that works for a lot of people. It, it wasn't going to work for me. And it wasn't something that I wanted to do. So I did it on my own. And it took a lot of commitment. And it took those little steps consistently. And there are many levels of managing your thoughts. Depression is probably when you've lost so much control to even manage your thoughts. That's, that's the worst case scenario. But how often do we make up our stories about what's going on in our mind with what people said? You know, what, what is it, it I, I'm going to tell you a, a fun little story that happened to me just this last weekend. I was at a conference, we were speaking in the conference, I had a table, a booth there, and I was selling my new book on forgiveness. My sister ended up coming to that convention, didn't have any idea I was going to be there, and she came to my table and talked to me, oh Bill, I'm so excited. And I, and I says, would you like a book? And right on top of my pile of books, I had a sign that said the price of the book. And I flipped that sign over because it's my sister. I'm not going to sell her a book. And I wrote the book and stuff, and then something was said about the sign. And she says, oh, I thought you flipped it over because you didn't want me to read what it said underneath it. And I said, no, I didn't want to have an argument with you about the price of the book, about you trying to buy a book. But we make up stories in our mind. We see little actions, and, and our thoughts can carry us away. And we just think kind of the worst all the time. Right. That's At least I naturally do. Yes, we all do. Yeah, we go, so. we go there. Let's talk about some of the addictions that, that become a problem for us and they definitely pull us out of being our best selves and they're the parameters that create problems. So what would you say are some of well, the ones you, you have when, clients when, all the time about? When, when we talk <laughs> about addictions, you're thinking alcohol, tobacco, uh, substance abuse, prescription medications, pornography, okay? Yes, those needs to be man. Those needs to be. I'm making up new words today. Yes, you are. I, it's good. Okay, so put that in your dictionary. Uh, they need to be managed, but there are other things that we don't think of as addictions. Social media. Right. Some of the less obvious is social media. How often do we watch social media, and and we get into like Facebook and we watch everybody's highlight reel? They don't put their worst pictures on Facebook. Well, some do, but <laughs> they don't put, you know, their everyday life. They, they put, put their, their best vacations moments. and their fun times and their date nights, right? I mean, I do that. And their greatest and, successes. Right. All of our successes. And we compare our normal reel to their highlight reel. And it becomes a real problem. That can, that can, can 
yeah, it can make us depressed. It makes us feel less than. But even if it doesn't do that, what's the amount of time? How many people do you see in a, in a meeting, in a, in a social gathering, and half of them are looking down at their phone? You know, are we, are we addicted to our electronic devices to where we're missing out on what's going on around us? Yeah, you quality know. time with our kids or our spouse, date nights. There's so much time that's wasted in all of the social media, not just Facebook, but all of it. I mean, YouTube and Instagram, there's well, so much Well, and other things, there. there's li little games that you can play on your phone. Are you checking out? They're not bad. It's when they start to take place of something else you could or should be doing that will add benefit to your life is when you start looking at these in, as an addiction. And you've heard all of that. You know, sometimes we just check out. We, we use things as an avoidance mechanism to not deal with the people around us in our relationships. And that can be much of, of, uh, of the social media, the phones, the computers, things like that. Sleeping can also be an addiction or, or an avoidance mechanism. Right, and food. Food can be an avoidance. Not, not, food can be yeah, an addiction. I don't know if we should talk <laughs> <about food. laughs> You know, we talk about the gaming, we talk about TV, we talk about too much electronics, but it can be, it simply can be food. You need to find out where you are having those, those things that are not in the parameters that they need to be. How can you dial in and claim your personal freedom so that you have the opportunity and the time to spend your time the way you would like to? So an addiction is anything that you do to excess that creates a detriment in your life. Um, one thing that I have to manage, I love to do, it's a good thing when it's managed properly, just like Facebook can be a good thing. <laughs> audiobooks. I am an audiophile. I love to get positive books. I love to just get entertaining books and listen to them as I go to work, as I'm I'm driving in my car, in my truck. Um, it's so enjoyable Even to me. And in a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I like you know, I, I go lay to sleep, I turn it on and set the fifteen minute timer in five minutes I'm checked out. But it it's good, it's fun, it keeps my mind active. But at the same time, when does it become a problem? And obviously, if we're at a family gathering and I've got my earphones in listening to some audiobook, and, it, and if I'm listening to it instead of interacting with my wife, then it's a problem. When I'm just driving down the road and it's me alone, I think it's a great thing. Could I be doing something better? Sometimes, yes. What I found is, is and this is a problem with the whole world, we've always got something to entertain our brain, to keep us entertained. If it even just the radio on, do we have to have the radio on when we're in the car? For me, I don't listen to the radio. I listen to, to these audiobooks. But what I find when I listen to too much or I get too involved in that, I don't leave any room for uh, intuition to come in. Or inspiration. Inspiration, intuition. I, I, it's amazing if I will just shut the radio off while I'm driving or involved in a project that doesn't require a lot of mental processing. If I'll just let my mind be quiet, it's amazing the inspiration, the intuition. You need to call so and so. You need to check with them. You need to follow up on this, follow up with this person to make sure they're doing okay. Invariably, when I follow up on those intuitions, they'll go, "I am so glad you called. Oh gosh, I've been struggling. I've been in con I've been going to call you for a few days now, but I just hadn't done it." And if my mind is so preoccupied with something else all the time to keep me entertained, there's no room for those messages to get through. So that's kind of the thoughts we have for you. Yeah, us. so what are you missing out on? What are you giving up because you're not taking and claiming your personal freedom? What is it costing you? What are you giving up? That's our question for you today. Is there something that you could take a look at and that you could change so that you could claim the freedom right here in the land of the free and the home of the brave, right? And what could you do differently? How could you manage your time and manage the things that you are doing to create the life that you want? So yeah, take full advantage of everything. You can use your freedom to choose, uh, the worst thing would be say meth. You can use, use your freedom to choose to use meth, but then it takes control of your life and you no longer, you're a slave to that habit, to that whatever that is. That's an extreme case. But there's many levels in between, so make sure that you are aware of your personal parameters that you need to live within to where you have full and maximum freedom available to you at all the time. Because it, freedom isn't doing whatever you want whenever you want. It's living within those parameters. 
Thanks for joining us here on All Things Possible. Again, if you haven't joined our community, please join our community. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's and, just a click away. And be a part of, of All Things Possible with us. We'll see you next time right here. Bye-bye.